Right, so once again into the breach with Rafik. So Rafik of the Many. I've been trying to figure out what is wrong with him, why he doesn't work, and I think I figured it out. So basically, my core idea, my core strategy, just doesn't fit my uh, my play environment anymore. Just doesn't work. Uh, I shouldn't be too surprised about that because it's happened with uh, Mile, Mile the Anima. So she was, a, I believe, a. Did she cost four to cast, six to use? Anyway, so she was nice. She was a 2 2 creature, legendary creature. And her ability was you would spend three green, red, white tap. Look at the top, I believe, five cards of library. Show off any creature of five power greater and just put it into play. So the idea with her, you get her, yeah, she costs three. So she cost a green, red, white to cast, then set her on turn unless you give her haste. So turn three, cast her, turn four, you drop something into play, something huge and scary, something that costs five power. Um, it could be, oh, they didn't, we didn't have um, uh, a tally back then. Uh, we had, it could be Sagarda, it can be, uh, who's the red, white angel? I don't know. Red White Angel, the one that doubles the power, doubles damage your stuff does, cuts in half the damage you take, you and your stuff take. It could be um, Avison, um, Angel of Hope, uh, could be Eternal Dragon, could be Keg, no, not Kiga because Kiga is blue. It could be a goddamn Lulamog. So, turn three, somebody could play Mile, turn 4, um, activate Mile, no, because she costs 6, you'd have to have a lot more mana for that, so anyway, you'd activate Mile, and now I'm getting off topic, activate Mile, and if Ulamog is on top, so you don't get the cast trigger, you don't get XL2 target permanence, but you still, early in the game, you've got this 10-10 indestructible that whisks away a quarter of somebody's deck whenever they attack them. Don't even have to hit them, just attack. Uh, this is the Ulamog, if you saw my Animar video. This is the Ulamog I took out of Animar. I've already put it on the buy list for uh, my LGS, and I'm going to get some cards that are more relevant for Rafik's rebuild. So, not only do I not want to do this anymore with Ulamog, I, I just don't want to even have it in my collection. Besides, it'll probably get reprinted. So, Mile is an example of a strategy that stopped working because people realized, oh, all we have to do is kill this 2-2 creature, um, keep it off the board in a uh, in Naya, which doesn't have counters, doesn't have recursion from the graveyard, really. Not too hard. Uh, same with Kalia. Uh, Kali fell off for the same reasons. She's a 4-mana 2-2 flyer that whenever you attack, you can drop an angel, demon, or dragon from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. Well, if, if your opponents can keep Kali off the board, and they can, and they did, and the, the reason, you know, the, those bastards, they... So I broke up Kalia. <laughs> I had these decks. So I had Mile, and she became unplayable in my group. I had Kalia. And she became unplayable in my group. Because if you don't have Kalia, and you don't have Mile, you're devolve into, okay, I have these big angel, demon, dragons, Eldrazi, you know, depending on what you're playing. And now I'm reduced to hard casting them. I'm reduced to actually paying the mana costs that are cheating them to play. That's not what I want to do. That's not what the deck was supposed to do. And now I'm going so slow, I'm going to get overrun and smashed. Or you had to put uh, so much protection in the deck that you seriously diluted your big tough creatures. So you didn't have that many. And so when you inactivate Mile, you wouldn't find one because you had to have so much damn protection. Or with Kalia, you didn't attack with her because you didn't have any impressive angel, demon, or dragon in her hand because you needed so much damn protection. And that's where Rafik is. Rafik, I've skimped on the protection as a some of the people have been watching my channel and commenting on the uh, first step is to diagnose the problem video. 
they all pointed out, you don't have enough protection. Well, yeah, because then I'm diluting the deck. And it's time to give it up. It's time to give up Rafik. So let's put, this isn't, yeah, is this gonna, this thing's pretty light. It's a little Lego yoke for my daughter. So I guess he can stand there. So what I'm going to do is take the deck apart and take out things that uh, I won't need anymore. First, let me show you what he's going to become. So Rafik, he's uh, been a solid soldier. He's done some good work for me. He's been a lot of fun to have under my command. But it's, it's time to retire him. So he's going to be sent off to a well-deserved retirement. He's going to find a place of honor in the art binder. In his place, I'm going to promote Kestria the Cultivator to my Enchantress Commander. I've got all the damn Enchantress cards. I, I might as well keep going to the strategy because I want to do it. So Kestia. She costs four. She costs the same as Rafik. One blue, green, white. She's a four for a legendary nymph. I'm going to ignore the bestow because I'm not going to be doing the Voltron thing. Enchant so whenever an enchanted creature or enchantment creature you control the tax, draw a card. Hmm. So if I'm rewarded for attacking with a certain class of creature, I don't need so many enchantresses, which is another problem. For example, Verdant Enchantress is one colorless double green. I need double green on turn two or three if I have her in my opening hand in order to cast her and start the draw engine. Mesa Enchantress is double white. One color is two white. They're both zero two creatures. They're easy to get taken out. Um, but if I have those in my opening hand, for example, it's a tougher mana requirement to fill. So I can remove those if I'm going to be drawing cards of attacking. So Kestria, Rafik, off to pasture you go. Kestia, you're now the commander of the Enchantress duck. So, I wouldn't need so many auras. Okay, that stays. Let's put the mana base separately. That stays. Forbid that will stay. Mana base. The mana base for review. Bruna, Light of Alabaster. Every tax blocks, I mean, attach her any number of auras on the battlefield. Or any number of auras that could enchant her from a creator hand. I hate that it says it instead of her. I mean, nitpicking, but it kind of irritates me. If I'm taking out most of the auras and I'm going for global enchantments, then I uh, won't really need her so much. So she goes in the possible cut pile. <clears throat> Something else that leads to that uh, possible cut pile is, oh, what was his name? Let's see. One of the lads that uh, was commenting on the video, yeah, Johnny Exert. So Johnny Exert said, why don't you use Starfield and Nyx? Well, I didn't know about Starfield and Nyx mana. Mm, might cut it because of the enchantments that I'm going to have. So he said, why don't you have Starfield and Nyx? And I said, I, I don't know, let me look that up, because I've never heard of it before. I looked it up, and that's exactly what the deck needs. Starfield and Nyx. So it costs four colorless, one white. It's an enchantment. During my upkeep, I can bring an enchantment out of my graveyard and put it directly into play. I like that. And then, it also says, all my non or enchantments become creatures with power and toughness equal to their mana cost. Hmm, so Kestia, if I attack from the enchantment creatures, I draw cards. If I turn all my enchantments into creatures, I can attack with them and draw cards. Yeah, I like that. So that's what I'm going to do. So Sovereigns of Lostralora, I can search for an aura if a creature I control attacks alone. Don't know if I need that. Set this, yep, she'll stay. Whenever cast and champion, we'll gain a left draw card. She will sit test and champion. 
if I'm going more enchantments, I don't know if I want her. Because she draws me cards and makes herself bigger. But the card draw from the enchantresses is going to be a reduced feature of the deck. And I'm going more for Kestia. Just attack with enchantment creatures and draw cards that way. I'm going to try that. Korok Intervention. Yep. Good. Replenish. Returnal enchantment should be graveyard to play. Yep. Mana. Mana. Mana Finder. Uh, Hull of Vora Stronghold for enchantments. Stays. Mana. Cultivate. I'm still going to need some ramp. Winds of Wrath. Destroy our creatures, no enchantments on them. Those creatures can't be regenerated this turn. <laughs> I had this for this deck. I had this so if I've got Rafik with enchantments, I can just wipe everything out, but I'm not going to be enchanting my enchantments, so that's probably going to get cut. So for boots, um, not going to worry so much about haste because and the enchantment creatures and I won't be equipping one creature and need him to attack in order to take out my opponents. So I'll cut Swift Foot Boots. That is the only artifact in the deck at this time so if I keep going like this I will have no artifacts and when I get the Titania Song when I pick that up from Journey Retige because they had an Antiquities one for only 200 grounds um, it's going to make this deck a lot more interesting. The Titania Song shuts off artifacts, turns them into creatures. The power and toughness equal to their casting cost. So if somebody had an indestructible artifact, and it's just an artifact creature. It's not indestructible anymore. I can blow it up. Sanctum Weaver, she's an enchantment creature. She'll stay. Uh, swords to plowshares. The main reason this is in here is... Uh, when I'm attacking with Rafik, or somebody has a creature that screws with him, I don't know, I'll, I'll keep that, I'll put that in possibilities. Void Slime, counter, definitely keep that. Sylvan's Crying, now somebody's asking me why I have this. What am I looking for? Sarah Sanctum. <laughs> More off than not, Sarah Sanctum. And then also they're asking me, why do you have Wargate? It seems like it's really expensive for the cost, for the effect. It is. Um, but of course, in a pinch, if I don't have Sylvan's Crying and I want that Sarah Sanctum, I can spend blue, green, white, go find something for zero, and put a land in place so I can find lands. If I'm drawing a lot of cards and I need to, uh, I want to keep them in my hand, I don't want to discard, I can go find Rollercory Tower. Because you search for permanent card with CMC X or less, and then it goes directly into play, so it skips past your one land per turn limit. Well, Wargate will stay, because I found it uh, interesting enough with the way that it play. Not everybody likes it, but that's most cards. Idolon of Countless Battles. Uh. So, he could be really interesting. Now, if I cut all the auras, what happened to light? Just a moment. Let me just... Try to get some more light in here. There we go, I think that's better. Let me get a little less light on this side. There we go, I think that's better. Do you think that's better? I hope you think that's better. So, I don't land of countless batter battles. Which reminds me, I just saw this video where the uh, Red Badger was talking about battles and the card type, the battle card type and what a mess it is and how it makes no goddamn sense. It was pretty funny. I encourage you to watch it. I'll put the description in the comments if I can find it again. Yeah, tuck, tuck. Tuck, tuck. My daughter built the Lego Tuck Tuck. Thank you. That's very nice. So look good on my desk. Okay, can I play with it? It's mine, isn't it? But can I play with it? You can play with it. Thank okay. you for building it for me. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> you even got a Lego five crowns. Five euros. Euros, crowns. It's five Lego monies. Okay. It's, 
Lego, whatever the Lego monies are. Lego, Leg Euros. Leg Euros, that's pretty cool. Leg Euros. Legichka Karuna. <laughs> so, I could play him, and if all of the creatures, all the enchantments are creatures, he'll be big. Uh, won't have any auras. Well, let's keep him for now. Screw it. And he's an enchantment creature, so. You have my hollow? Yep, definitely keep that. Tundra, Island, and I'll be reviewing the Mana Base, I'll go over the basic land count. Sorry, Skilled Mage. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have questioned her, a lot of people. Because they don't think she's worth the, the slot, they don't think she's that strong. Um, and to be honest, she's not, but she did win, win me a game once because I could tap the blocker that was going to block my one attacker. Of course, that was the Rafik build. So I'm not sure if I want her, I'll put her in the maybe pile. Okay, Shield of the Oversoul. Well, if I'm going more global enchantments, enchantment creatures, less auras, I mean, if Kestia is my commander, and if she gets killed, well, I've got Hull of Heliod's Generosity to get her back. Um, I could put in Skull of Orm again if I've got Starfield of Nyx I could just on my upkeep bring her from the graveyard to the battlefield again uh, it's not standing up this is pretty late so I don't think I need so many auras so let's put the or all the auras in the possible cut pile yeah in this guy Nomad Mythmaker so, put target aura from a graveyard in play, enchanting creature I control. Ramp, definitely keeping that. Uh, might as well keep her because she's an uh, early enchantress. She doesn't have double green, it's only one green. She's only zero one, 1, but she has shroud. Yeah, let's keep her for now. Rank her. Do I want to cut? All the auras, do I want to keep some? So, I can just play uh, Nylia. I can play the Nylia that gives all the creatures trample instead of Rancor, and all my creatures that I trample, not just one. And I'm not that arsed about having cards come back to my hand to recast and start the draw engine because I'm going to be attacking with the gem. Let's put that in the maybe. Breeding pool comes into play tapped. Uh, spend this one in cash commander. Uh, do I care about this? I'll probably cut that because um, I don't think I'll be casting Ketra too many times in the command zone since she's an enchantment. I'll be cheating her into play, bringing her back to my hand with other methods. Um, won't be putting her in the command zone that much. Uh, the incremental additional counter isn't going to be that impressive with her. So I'll drop that. Path of Anstressory. So my command tower that comes into play tapped. Creature type is a creature type. It's too bad her type isn't enchantment. Her type is nymph. I don't think I'll have to let nymphs, but I'll keep it anyway. Yo mama's reach. Yep, need some ramp still. Idle out of blossoms. <clears throat> two two, whenever she and another enchantment enters battlefield under my control, so she could get disgusting with replenish. If I bring back say ten enchantments, I draw ten yeah, I keep her. Uh arcana wings. Another card that everybody was saying was not really worth the slot. And to be fair, they're right. I just like it. Um, as I explained in my video about Rafik, I just I love the look of the card. I just I like how the blue is tied together. Uh, I like the feature site alternate frame. Um, the aura swap is is okay, so I can attack with the creature it's flying, and then bang, I can spend three at instant speed, and it suddenly loses flying. It falls out of the sky, but it was flying when it attacked. And it now has an allergic conscription. And now it gets plus 10, plus 10, trample, and 
some flavor of Annihilator. But I'll cut it. Armadillo Cloak. Um, I'm sure I've got enchantments that'll give me life, so I don't think I need that. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of things to get. This deck is going to be completely different under Kestia. I just like that. A lot of people don't like it. I like it. Shell like Destiny. Huh, now I can put this back in my modern collection. Ancestral Mask. I just put this in two days ago, and now I'm breaking that <laughs> part of the deck up. Force Worship. Yeah, this it can temporarily solve the problem. Uh, treachery. Steal a creature and tap lands. Sigil and Empty Throne. I like it. Um, who was it? Was it the Wheelsman? I think the Wheelsman 29. He, he doesn't like this card. Um, it doesn't work for him. And to be fair, some cards that I have in my deck won't work for you at all. Nope. Uh, some cards you play won't work for me because of the way I play and the environment I'm in. This is one of those cards that works for some people but not others. For some people this is too slow, too reactive. Uh, for me in the way that I was playing, again, the deck was pulled in so many directions and this only added to it. Uh, this is pretty good so I'll keep that. I think I'll keep Soul Snare. Because again, if I get that Starfield of Nex, um, if I don't have anything else interesting in my graveyard during my upkeep, and I get the Starfield in play, I can pull the Soul Snare back. Exploration. This deck does not have a Soul Ring. This deck, if I remove the boots, has no artifacts whatsoever. I'm relying on Exploration and Burgeoning to replace Soul Ring. So my idea is I'll be drawing a lot of cards, a lot of those cards would be land by default, and then I can play extra lands. So that stays. Mari's Wake stays. Oblivion Ring. So if I ring a creature, and this becomes a creature because of Starfield of Nyx, hmm. Then it dies, it gets a creature. Well, I don't know. Great, let's try it. Burgeoning, just what we're talking about. Copy enchantment. Oh, this is great. I I'll always remember the time that I had sigiled the empty throne and I copied it, and I'm getting two, four, four angels every time I cast an enchantment. That, was, that felt good. Aura of Silence definitely stays. Slows my opponents down, and in a pinch, I can sacrifice it to naturalize something, disenchant something. Castry falls down. Castry stand up. There we go. Cloud cover. Another controversial enchantment. Uh, most people don't see the point. Uh, the point is it's really pretty. Uh, this is a foil copy. It's really pretty. I like looking at it when it's in play. It has some game effect. I don't care. It's just so pretty. No, seriously. <laughs> so, um, I think this will be better in a pure enchantment deck in more of a global enchantment than an aura deck um, because I can bounce the enchantment back to my hand and I don't lose any auras enchanting it. Um, somebody targeted Rafiq and he had two or three enchantments okay I can bounce them back to my hand with cloud cover but then those enchantments go to the graveyard so I have to jump through some hoops to get them back re-enchant him unless it's angelic destiny unless it's rancor in that case I don't care because I'll recast them and draw cards. Kind of a mess. So I think by swapping it for Kestria, I will fix that mess. Do I want this? The, the idea of it, if I kept it, would be so I attack with one creature as a teaser, and then I get another combat phase and attack with their. Nah, fuck it. Broken Fall, and it's kind of neat that these were running next to each other. Okay, Broken Fall and Molting Skin. I'll probably keep one and not the other. Because it'll still be neat to uh, have a way of regenerating one of my creatures. And I keep Broken Fall. Um, and it'll be a global enchantment. 
So if I have Starfield next, it'll be a 3 3. <coughs> I can still bounce it back to regenerate a creature. Got some retains. Um, not going to care so much about this. So I'll cut it. Sterling Grove, oh yes. If I have a bunch of other enchantments and I'm turning them into creatures, giving them Shroud is going to be nice. I'm going to put Privilege Position back. Sun Titan. Oh yeah, he stays. It's it, The deck has white. Um, only two of my decks that have white do not have Sun Titan because I like him so much. Vern Enchantress. Uh, I've always liked this card ever since Revised. Ever since in Revised I was trying to make this work. And it was tough. And I persevered. And I made really, really bad decks to try to make it work. And they sucked. But I played them anyway. And now here, she works, but... Uh, if the goal is to play enchantment creatures and attack with them, and like I was saying at the beginning, that double green can bite me, so I can retire her along with Rafik. Austere Command. Destroy all artifacts. Uh, somebody mentioned that I should just use Cyclonic Rift, and they're right. I don't have an extra Cyclonic Rift, though. I only own one copy. It is a foil copy from the original Ravnica. And, uh... The card is so hated, so oppressive, that I just never bothered getting into the copy, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll say screw it. I don't know, I'll think of something else. So this will go in the baby pile. I've started to make... I'm mixing up the maybe and the definitely cut pile, I'll just make... This is the maybe definitely cut pile. This is the keep pile. This is the man base pile. So, this is keep, this is maybe definitely cut, and this is mana. How confusing is that? Land, land, land. Castrate falls again, idyllic tutor. Go find a enchantment, put in my hand. Show it to everybody. Shuffle. Maybe I put her like this. Oh yeah. Why the hell did I didn't think about that? Of course not. Let's see her. All right. Let's keep going. Mesa Enchantress. Same things as Verderin. Um, Stoic Angel. Do I want to keep her? Hmm. I think I'm going to need her in this rebuild. So put it in there. Maybe definitely cut. Three visits. Yep. Good ramp. Drowsy conscription. Do I want it anyway? I won't have that many ways to cheat it in play. Cast aid. Eh, I'll probably cut it. Manamo. Untap Sarah Sanctum. Tower of the Magistrate. Foxes people. Oh, this is a great card. If you don't have one of these, get one of these. It's fun. It's hilarious. Your friends will hate you for it, but that's part of the fun. Green Sun's Zenith, yep, go find uh, Argothian Enchantress, Cedar Enchanter, whoever. Teferi's Protection, yep, it's good to have protection. Um, make sure you carry some protection in your wallet. You never know what's out there. Battle Grace Angel, okay, I won't be attacking alone, so I won't need her. Cedar, I just got this guy, I just got this goddamn guy for the deck. He's not an enchantment creature. Never cast enchantment, so I'll draw a card. But he's not an enchantment creature. So, probably definitely cut him. Bear Umbra. I'll just put a nature's lore. Nature's will. Nature's will. I've got a nature's will, and I only need to hit them with any creature. Of course, this one just attacks. It doesn't need to connect. Nature's will, they need to connect. Nature's lore. Nature something. Uh, two colorless green green. It's an enchantment. Whenever a creature you control hits one of your opponents, untap all lands you control, tap all lands they control. That will go in for Bear Umbra. Because this is going on a single creature. The nature is lore, nature is will. I'm now mixing them up. Uh, applies to the whole team. Mana. Mana. Yeah, definitely keep her. Come on, Tower. Island. Island. So that's... That's where I am with the deck. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So 
So I've got 36 lands. I'll verify the mana base later. Make sure I've got the right pips. Okay, so what is definitely cut? All the auras are definitely cut. Anything that is not an enchantment creature, I will cut. Uh, now I need another wrath effect. Fuck. Blows up all the artifacts, but then I have to decide what creatures to kill. Because I don't want to destroy all the enchantments. I have to figure something else. Ah, I just, I just love that card. <sighs> all these auras that I just put in the damn deck and now they're coming out because I'm changing the entire focus of it and that guy let's put it over there I don't know, I'll put that for now So. Okay, so these are probably what I'm going to get in a lot of cuts. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, Okay, 26 cuts. Two land. So 24. 24 cuts. I've got 24 cuts to work with. Wow. I'm going to get Titania Song. I'm going to get Starfield of Nyx. They're on order. They will go in here. So I still have 24 slots to play with. I still have 24 slots to rebuild Rafik and to Kestia. So there's a instant, there's a creature, non enchantment creature, protection, find something, ramp, find something, find something, creature. Enchantment, enchantment. Let's put all the enchantments together and see how many I've got. I should have quite a few. Basically, all the enchantments that weren't auras are just staying in the deck. Treachery. Should I put pacifism in here? Yeah, probably won't care about it. I'll put sphere of resistance in here for sure. I used to have sphere of resistance in here. A no, sphere of safety. Sorry, a sphere of safety. I used to have sphere of safety in here. And it wasn't doing enough because it was just protecting me. Now, if it protects me and I get that star field in play, and it's a 5-5 creature that I can smack people with, that's pretty good. I kind of like that. She's an enchantment creature. So, not really sure what pile to put her in. Now I feel like Gavin opening packs of magic cards and not wondering and wondering what the hell pile to put things in because they made the pack so fucking confusing. Ramp. Enchantment creature. I'm going to need more enchantment creatures, I can see that. I'll need more enchantment creatures for when I don't have the star field. Counter. Enchantment creature that doesn't have any power so it doesn't matter if she attacks or not. Uh, protection. Sithis is only a 1-2, so she doesn't... So what if I got... I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 13 enchantments. I'm getting two more. The Tatini Song and the Starfield of Nyx. I only have four enchantment creatures at the moment, and only one of them is impressive as an. Well, no, I have Kestia too. She's an enchantment creature, and she's impressive as an attacker. Only he is impressive as, as an attacker. The other three are support creatures, so two draw and a mana creature. Okay, what else have I got? I've got Get Stuff Back Guy. I've got Get Stuff Back Girl. I've got Questionable Value Tap and Counter Girl. I've got Draw Girl. Squirrel Girl. So I've got three creatures. Three creatures that let me draw 
based on casting an enchantment. I could put Enchantress's presence in here and then Kestia when I attack with an enchantment creature and I need enough enchantment creatures so if I don't have the star field out because I don't want to spend them well I don't know how much opalescence is I don't think it's cheap maybe it is cheap I know the foil one would be fucking expensive but maybe the flat one is cheap I don't know but if I get opalescence that will complement the Starfield of Nyx so I'll have two ways of doing that effect uh, but I still will need some enchantment creatures for the times that I do not get either one of those out and I need to start attacking in order to draw with her and what do I have for control and return how many counter spells do I have? I only have three. Deferred's Protection is kind of like a counter spell, but not really. So I've got three counter spells. I've got two pieces of global protection. I've got one piece of recursion. How about ramp? What do I have for ramp? We've got three visits, nature's lore, your mama's reach, and cultivate. Sylvan scrying, and war great, war great, the yeah, war gate. It's basically a ramp card. The way I play it, it's basically ramp. So I've got six ramp cards. Shouldn't be too bad. I've got go find Sithis. I've got go find Starfield. I've got Get rid of your damn creature, it is offending my eyes. Get some life. Because I am generous. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, that's it. I'm gonna put these two together, these two videos. Um, splice them together. Get it up there, and I'm gonna start looking at my binders, see what else I can do. As Rafik retires. Alright, 